key concepts in my life and really smashed out these limiting beliefs. And for a bit of a show and tell, I brought actually literally brought, I'll hold it up here, some of my limiting beliefs that I'm going to show in the freaking presentation. This is like seven years old, eight years. So this is the first one, okay? Hold it up. I'll read it out. Just like, just a little teaser, okay? So I have really messy writing. Production has to be managed by me because no one on earth is as, as administrative as me. Okay, so I'm very organized. I, I hold that like a badge and I literally wrote down, no one can do it, okay? Two. Hold it up. I'll read it out like this. I can double revenues only when I'm small doing 20K a year. Well, we smashed that one because we've grown a lot more than 20K a year. So that's another one. I love this one. I have no one as good as Graham to wash houses. Graham was my first tech. We did 89K. Now we've hired a whole lot more techs than just Graham. But this is literally like what I believed. I, I wrote it all down. This was like 2016. So yeah, seven years ago. Look at this one. Nothing can replace my 100K income at Elite. Elite was my painting franchise. I made 100 grand a year. I traveled Asia three months a year. Uh, I, uh, I, I really didn't like it near the end because I was paying $52,000 a year in royalty fees. I was getting pissed off, but I had these golden handcuffs. I had to keep this. Um, I, I, I obviously wanted the money and literally wrote down that nothing on earth can replace it. Well, now definitely has been replaced. I love this one. I have no candidates to replace Esther. Albert, you're just laughing. You're cracking up. You love this. Uh, Esther's my little sister. You guys met her at the summit. Uh, she was my sales rep for Elite. She would sell 400K a year-ish uh, while I was getting Revive going and also running uh, the cruise. So she was my sales rep. And now uh, she's been replaced as well. I love this one. I'm introverted and not good enough in sales. I still am introverted today. Uh, I get my energy from just like reading a book or chilling out. Uh, after the summit, you guys can probably appreciate I was pretty dead for like a week. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to suck in sales. Um, you can definitely still be a people person and be introverted. Oh, here's a good one. We'll do this one last and we'll get going. Uh, Mike will shut down my washing business because, sorry, yeah, I have such messy writing. Mike will shut down my washing business because of my non-compete. So what does that mean? Mike was the franchisor of my painting franchise. And I thought he would take me to court and sue me um, if I started a washing business. It was like a very real fear that I had. Um, and now my non-compete is done. And that's why uh, we're starting painting this year. So, um, but that was one that I had. Okay, last one, promise. No one actually loves to paint as a job. It is a transitional job only. This could be gutter cleaning windows, whatever. Well, now with the hybrid role, like I told you guys, there are people who view this as a bridge job. There are also people that say, this is a career I'm sticking with you. Gr grow me. I want to help grow this thing, et cetera. So that is that. Let's get into it here, guys. Limiting beliefs. We'll blow this one up nice and big here. Uh, you enter full screen. All right, beautiful. So what are limiting beliefs, okay? I went a little crazy on some of these slides, so I'll just kind of hit this at a high level, okay? So you have to be very aware that your beliefs are the stories you tell yourself. For anyone who's listening, like binge listening to Hermosi right now, Alex Hermosi, check it out. Very much preaching this right now. Um, you need to challenge your beliefs. They are assumptions and they need to be challenged every single day. So as entrepreneurs, I think we need to be extra careful what we actually allow into our minds. And if someone says something to me, well, that is like just their opinion. There's very like few people on earth, I would say that I would let like their beliefs come into my mind without it being like thoroughly challenged. Okay. Um, this is going pretty deep. And I've talked with some of you about this, but your, your programming like goes right back to childhood, right? So I was raised in a family, amazing parents. My dad is a minister, um, you know, raised five kids on like 60K a year, okay? Like did it, I wouldn't, I was definitely, I don't want to give this story that I was poor and came from nothing, but it's definitely not a story where, you know, we were hitting nice lavish vacations and I had like all this entrepreneurial training from a kid. Like uh, I was raised very well, raised on a farm and really taught like hard work. And a lot of those themes today come through in how I operate my life and my business. So 
however you've been brought up, you're going to have a lot of like deep seated beliefs tied right back to like your upbringing. Um, and this is going to be all like individual for us. And I'm happy to deep dive this more with you guys, but I'm not a, a clinically trained psychologist, but I'm literally just sharing what has worked in my life. And I think you can pull some value from it. Um, number three, be like super careful of like definitive absolute words. Um, like no one always never can't and not possible. Uh, my wife and I catch each other with this, right? Like literally saying that will never happen. Uh, and this has been flipped on my head. And I'll tell a quick story. When I was um, painting my first year of painting in a summer, I did 52K in revenue, worked my butt off, lost a bunch of weight, whatever. The next year, I was in this district manager role, okay, which said, hey, Dave, you're going to have like four newbies under your wing and you're going to help these guys and girls grow their business. And I had this one guy, uh, Jordan, and Jordan said to me, Dave, my revenue goal this year is $105,000. And I said, Jordan, bring your goal down, man. There's no way you're going to do 100 because I only did 52. So maybe set it around. And he was like, man, who is this guy? And he went out and did 100K and we made a bet and I ended up buying him like dinner or lunch or something. Um, but it was the kind of initial early learning sign of like, be very cautious projecting your beliefs onto someone else um, because sometimes they will take it uh, as a challenge and it can be like quite motivating. Quote from Henry Ford, famous entrepreneur, whether you think you can or think you can't, either way you're right. Uh, absolutely love this. This was drilled in my head uh, as a young age from my soccer coach. Uh, and, and it's so true. Like if you're already going into the game or into business saying you can't hit 500 grand this year or 750 or a million or whatever it is, you're already like doomed and screwed before you started. So a big takeaway you're going to have, especially to the newcomers in the program, your furniture and your brain, we want to adjust it so significantly that we like go to war with your technician mindset and we fully prop you up over this next half year and you view your business looking on top of it very much CEO-like. And as you get some of these systems in place, you're going to start to see some of this momentum, um, which is exciting. Um, your life and business is totally what you make of it. I could talk on that for four hours, but uh, we'll just keep going with this. Uh, the thrill that nothing's guaranteed, I think should excite you. Um, it has been a scary slow season for a lot of us here, I think, with seeing, especially those of you that have some more significant overhead, 10, 15, 20K per month of overhead. Um, it can be quite scary. And at the same time, that should also like highly motivate you. I shared in school today an email that Katrina has been sending out client by client and it's been working quite well for us. It's kind of exciting, like us against the world and how can we fill the schedule in a traditionally really slow month. Um, I, I find that quite exciting. Um, it can be a little bit scary, but the fact that you're not guaranteed a steady paycheck and that your output of your business is 100% dependent on your inputs you put into it, um, that should be pretty exciting. And I think that's why a lot of you quit your nine to five job because you said, I'd rather be compensated for actually like what I can create on this world. And I'll tell you guys, the jobs are always waiting for you. If you try this entrepreneurship thing three years, you don't like it. You can always go back to a job. My sister, she's a highly trained lawyer in Canada here. She still busts my balls today and says, when is Peter Pan, me going to grow up and get a real job? Because that was what she said. She's like, you should just get a real job. Like, it, And I'm going on 14 years and still haven't got like a real job. So um, your level of compensation, this is really important, is directly correlated to the amount of value that you can provide to the world. So if you want to go clean windows all day, um, maybe you'll make 100K. If you want to be the manager of a window cleaning business, maybe you'll make 150K. If you want to be the CEO of a window cleaning business, you can make quarter million dollars um, and beyond it. If you start franchising the thing or doing multiple locations or like Micah going the influencer route, having other revenue streams, like it's all correlated to value that you are bringing to the world. So how I view your individual location, grow it, get it profitable, get a hands-on manager in place give them the assistance of the office. And then you get in a position like AJ, who's slacking me saying, do we add services? Do we go second location? Um, do I take on more coaching roles? Uh, what, what do I actually do? So that becomes kind of a fun part. And I would look at in your mindset, 
dedicating like two years to pay down the learning debt to this business and say, I'm going to learn everything. I'm going to systematize it and I'm going to lift my head up in 24 months and then have some decisions to make where I want to take this thing. Uh, two more here, guys. Learn to doubt your doubts. I think kind of touched on that to start, but super important. Again, like it, it's just your assumption right now. So, you know, don't be so closed minded, like open your mind to a better way of doing things. And I love this one. The only constant in life is change. Okay. So just get comfortable with it. Um, I don't do business planning a whole lot longer than like three to six months to be on. Like I still have a three-year vision, but be cautious of getting like married to that vision that this is exactly how it needs to be because business is like a river. It ebbs and flows. And I think like planning much more than 30 days out can be kind of dangerous. So I would have a general plan where you're going, but I think we lose it in like our 30 day sprint action plans. And that's why in the program, you should be checking in with your coach regularly. Uh, I know Jackson's offering, you know, 30 minute calls with him. Uh, I'll show you guys at the end of this, but I just opened up my calendar for 20 minute one-to-ones. Um, we've got to make sure we hit the implementation um, really good this year. So um, be very comfortable with with changing markets. And especially, I think we're seeing quite an economic shift too, um, in, in a good way, because it's starting to free up some team members that can come to us, uh, which we can definitely discuss more. All right, here we go. Some more limiting beliefs. I held up like six or seven for you guys, but I've listed a whole list. These are 100% true. Uh, I will run you through these and uh, feel free to blow up the chat with even your limiting beliefs you have. I think I'm being pretty uh, transparent on this and I think you're going to get the most out of it. Uh, if any of these resonate with you, feel free to put it into the chat. All right. One, I can never make more than hundred grand per year income from my business. Um, have proved that wrong. You definitely can. Um, whatever your business is, it all comes down to value uh, provision in the world. So focus on that leading with value, leading with service. Um, and one of one of our best clients um, with Revive, I, I try to go to his house every year. I've been kind of slacking, but um, he told me, and he's the most chill guy, walks around and, you know, flip-flops all day. And he said, um, I got him talking about his company. He has 543 employees across Canada and it's insane. And um, he tells me, he told me early on in Revive, when I was door knocking, I met him, we ended up painting his house, whatever. He said, um, focus on the quality. He said, chase the quality and the profits will come. And it was during a time in 2019 when we grew really quickly. Um, quality was not where it is today by any means. And he was giving me some coaching saying, man, focus super on the quality. And so we did that over the course of a year through 2020 and really upped our quality, started monitoring our callback rates, uh, and that helped significantly. So, you know, I think for you guys, obviously have your revenue goal, you've got to pay yourself, make your net profit margins, and we'll talk about that in the program, but um, really focusing on the quality, I think was great advice from, from Tom there, uh, one of our clients. Uh, two, my business will never be able to run without me. I think those of you at the summit saw a pretty clear case of how bought in um, Steve and Katrina are and they're I would say they're running man I would say they're running like 90 percent of the business um, which is awesome I still love um, jumping in when I can obviously our one-to-ones yesterday um, and then I attend our monthly uh, full team meeting every month in the office so um, you know I'm not preaching you can leave your business for a year and do nothing. You have to kind of find that sweet balance of like being present, but also like having a life. And I'm I'm still struggling with it, to be honest, but um, it should generally run day to day uh, without you. Uh, another one, if the job's going to be done right, I have to be the one to do it. Um, I did share that actually early in Revive when we did our 89 grand in the first year. Uh, it was very much me had to be on the job site and had to fight that one, had that too with my painting business back in the day. Uh, I love this one. And this, this comes from our, uh, from friends too. Like, like our market will never sustain 125 per hour charge rates per technician. Um, it definitely does. That's our target charge rate. Um, still today I posted in school, $2,000 a day per crew. That's what we want to be hitting. Um, and you really want to be focused on getting a four times 
wage multiple, which is if you're paying your guy, say 25 an hour, you got to bill him out at 100 if you want to make money in this business. Um, you could do it at 3x, but I personally really like four. Love this one. I need a new truck so my clients take me seriously and I look professional. Well, I counted up the other day for you guys. I bought 13 used vehicles now. Uh, for me personally, a couple of Honda Civics, whole bunch of caravans, whole bunch of Astros, Savannah vans, two grooming trucks. Uh, I, I've uh, traditionally always bought pre-owned vehicles. Uh, we wrap them, go with decals. We've got some of you in this program spend like 150 bucks on decals and you're like good to go, right? Saving up for that wrap, put something on the truck. Um, but I'm here to tell you, you don't need um, brand new vehicles. And we kind of deep dove this a little bit at the summit. Everyone's got different styles. Um, I'm just sharing transparently what, what I believed and how I've seen it kind of work itself out. Big one for me, firing myself from the office. Uh, no one can schedule as good in the office as I can. Kind of talked about that. I love being organized. I had to find someone as good as me. And now Katrina is, I would say, significantly better than me. I think I'm just becoming less patient as an entrepreneur too. Like when I'm clickety click on Jobber, I'm just like, I can be doing like so much more right now that I just, I think I, my patience just like wears thin, but um, which is good. I think you want to be like evolving as you grow your business. Uh, I have to be the one doing painting estimates. Okay. I did 2,500 plus painting estimates. That's a lot of, uh, you know, handshaking and coffees had at kitchen tables, et cetera. But um, I think getting out of your own way and learning, Hey, other people can do estimates. And it's kind of cool. I'm like recreating this now um, doing estimates again in person but training the next person coming up in our company uh, to do the painting estimates. So that's been a lot of fun. Talked about this, right? No one wants a career cleaning gutters, washing windows, went to war on that. Um, door knocking doesn't work. This is so good, so good because I'm bothering people at the door. Uh, we've booked hundreds of thousands of dollars from door knocking. Uh, I sent myself through college and bought my first place uh, literally due to door knocking and painting homes. Uh, I would sell a hundred grand in a winter before we'd go out and even produce like the work in painting. So again, your brain might just be like, how is this even possible? It's like, you're putting up that wall resistance, telling yourself it's not possible. Um, it is possible. And I did it in different markets as well. Right. Um, it doesn't always just need to be, Oh, they're in a super nice area or whatever. Like we're in Canada here, we get snow, it's cold, and we're out door knocking, passing out flyers, signs up, like you telling yourself right now, it's not spring. Um, we had a guy in our program last year, and I was always, not always, but a few times, giving him some tough love with coaching, because he would not pick up the phone, unless it was a sunny day, because he said, clients aren't in a good mood on a rainy day. I said, I don't care what the weather is, you have 500 clients to call, call them on a rainy day, call them on a sunny day. Like the weather should be irrelevant to the action that you take in your business. It's like today, me saying I didn't sleep good. So I'm going to bail out on lifting weights. Like, no, I'm still going to go. So I think just like removing your feeling from feelings from a lot of the actions you have to take is important. Um, and, you know, Ben Wynn has done this super good uh, in the program. Uh, ben, are you? Ben's on the call. Ben, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute, man. Door knocking. You, um, you went to war on your limiting beliefs with door knocking. And I want you to share if you're, if you're able and can hear me and kind of talk for a minute on that journey through fighting the door knocking belief and bothering people. Cause I think you've done it as well as anyone. Hey Dave. Yeah, definitely. Door knocking is awesome. I, I really like it. Um, it. I think it helped us go through uh, last year and actually double our revenue without it. I, I don't think I would have reached uh, that, that kind of stage. Um, I used, I used to think uh, door knocking is bothering people, but it's, uh, it's actually giving people value. You know, you're cutting time from them having to go out there and do surges on, uh, do, do a bunch of research on a company. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're giving value, like you're, you're there, you're presenting your brand, your brand is actually really good. You know, you have great reviews, you have something that you can help them with, you can, 
you know, you're just providing tons and tons of value when you door knock somebody, you know, yeah. you're kind of saving them time. You're saving them a lot of research, a lot of headaches, a lot of whatever. So it's yeah. value. Yeah. I love it, man. You've doubled your business to multi six figures. You're scaling up to half a million this year is your, is your plan. Uh, yeah. And, and door knocking has been a central part of that. And I think it's also been helped you significantly for in-person estimates. Cause you've already talked to thousands of people at their home. You're like way more confident now, like meeting people talking about whatever, like you're just, you, you've paid down that learning debt to really learn the in-person process, which has been so cool to see. Yeah, definitely. And it helps me with like being able to talk to these candidates as well. And then being able to teach them like, you know, how to, um, how to actually door knock and, and probably yeah. sell and selling is not just like, you know, you're trying to take some from someone, you're trying to give the value to them. Yeah. You know? So just being able to communicate that with uh, my, my future uh, people, is going to be a, a, a great thing, you know? Yeah. Love it, man. Thank you so much for sharing. And like, been so yeah. cool to see your journey and guys, like, as Ben's been growing, I've been telling him, man, you've got 60, you've got 80. Now you have how many Google reviews, Ben? Over 120, I think. Was it 120 something? 123 and maybe yeah. one day. Um, okay. And a lot. Actually, the, the ones from door knocking gives, give you like really, really nice reviews. They, they write like paragraphs, like yeah. paragraphs. So. It's, ama it's amazing, man. So you're, yeah. you know, guys, as Ben was growing, I'm telling him, man, who better to go out in your market and tell the story of the services you offer than you? You've got already 100 reviews, now 123. Like your Google reviews, guys, should give you confidence that hundreds of people love you and have trusted you. That's the confidence you throw on as your armor and go to the door. And this isn't like, don't leave their doorstep till they object three times and shove a flyer in their face and sell or be sold. It's just like, you're literally there. Hey, Mrs. Smith, we're doing some homes in your area. I'm here right now. Did you want to get a free estimate? We'll get your windows all taken care of. We've got a sweet scheduling discount on right now. Did you want to hear a little bit more? Shut up, end of story. Like, it's just, it's so easy. It should be like you meet someone at a bar or your church or the pub or wherever, your kid's swimming lesson, just like strike up a conversation. So super good, Ben. Thanks so much. A uh, couple more guys, couple as in a few. Uh, I do not... If I do not have X as my production manager, business will fall apart. I've had a number of production managers. I've had Regan. I've had Eric. I've had Kevin. I've had Drew. I've had Jason. Uh, I've had Austin. And now I have Steve. So I think I've had, yeah, six or seven now. And each time it's like, oh my goodness, someone's leaving. The business is going to fall apart. It's like, no, you find a way to replace them and grow the next person. I love this one. No one wants to hire my business because of the student painting name devaluing the quality. Well, we smashed that because we did a whole bunch of houses with the student name. Worked just fine. Uh, Toby, this one's for you. And Albert, you're, you're living proof of this, brother. Clients will not pay 50% deposit for washing because no materials are needed. I justified it in my head. If I had a flooring business or painting business, that makes sense because Toby has to go out and spend two grand on materials and get them, et cetera. But with washing, I'm like, our, our physical material cost to soft wash a home is like $13. It's like, you don't need much of anything. Um, but we smash that because people are booking it and people are loyal to us when they throw down money. And there's a whole lot less cancellations last minute because people have already paid and also keeps our business honest that we're committing to them as well, holding their spot in our production schedule. Uh, we screwed this one up big time. Christmas lights have to be sold, not leased, because clients want to own the product. Our first year, we sold 31 jobs. We sold the lights. Terrible idea. We've now pivoted our business model and went leasing. Uh, I, I was told the story we should sell. I believed it. We did it. It worked. Leasing works five times better than the sale model. And that's a whole nother conversation, but we'll leave it there. Can't do estimates when it's raining. Again, weather dependent uh, story you tell yourself. Uh, I have to do color test color samples before the job starts to provide that high level of service. So Simon and Yoas are painters in the group. You guys know what that's about, you know, running around doing all these test colors to book the job. And then I'm going to wait with my marketing until the weather's better when people are in a better mood to buy my services. I've told myself that as well. Again, going to war with 
the current state of the weather. Obviously, I'm not saying if a hurricane's rolling in town like it did for AJ to go out and be door knocking. Obviously, there's like legitimate safety concerns with weather. We don't send our guys out when there's wind advisory warnings, maybe three to five days per year. I'm generally just talking about a day today that's kind of gray. We're still getting after it, doing our outbound calls, doing our email outreaches, signs going up, crews are working. It's February, it's cold. Most people would say just take the time off. Okay, I got lots more. Uh, I'll, I, maybe we'll check our comments here. We'll we'll take a quick uh, quick little intercession here. Uh, Micah's saying, I'm pretty sure the last, ibuprofen two times a day. Nice. Uh, for Micah, it's how do I get through another slow Jan Feb next year with the crew? Totally, man. We can talk about that. Uh, for me, it used to be I have to stay busy, then it's my crew busy, and now it's my crews and my managers. It's like you just keep leveling up the game. Uh, Josh Lester, great door-to-door, -door, nice. The Bentrepreneur, love it. Uh, good stuff. And yeah, waterproof paper, man, exactly. Um, we use that still to this day to go out and quote jobs when it's raining. Uh, we touched on door knocking. A little more personal here, guys. Thailand's dangerous. Can't travel there by myself. Was told this again. Um, you're crazy. Why are you doing this? I went and spent eighty dollars, bought a backpack on Craigslist, did it, and now traveling is is great and big part of who I am. Uh, cannot be a strong entrepreneur because I'm introverted. Again, you read these sales books, guys. You need to be the loudest person in the room, meeting people like not the pace. I actually think people relate to folks who are introverted because they tend to be quite good listeners um, which is funny if you guys chatted to my wife at the summit uh, i'm working on the listening part uh, i don't want to promote myself because i'm going to come across as spammy or salesy that's a huge one um guys again you've got to be bold if you're just you know constantly marketing your stuff but never actually asking for the sale even in quotes like be bold and ask the client do you want to go ahead and get this on the schedule? Can we get this on the schedule? We can book you for next Thursday. How does that sound for you? Some of you are just going and giving a quote. Oh, I'll email with the follow-up. Like, no, literally give a date. Um, we did three painting estimates this last week. We tried to close on the spot all three. We got the first one booked. Um, we're asking for the sale. Very important. I need to drive a truck in order to be a contractor. I've shared this before, guys. I drove my Honda Civic. We did over 300K. You guys, a lot of you know that. Um, you can't grow a business unless you have an investor access to capital. This one really held me back. I need a 50K loan. I need a 100K loan. Then I can grow my business. Um, a, a small loan wouldn't hurt, but I would also encourage you guys, a lot of you on the truck right now, what an opportunity instead of making a 20% net like I do, you can make a 40 to 50% net, go smash out 100K, throw aside a nest egg, and then go take 10K and inject it into your business. So I would look at how your current one truck model can actually be the bank to fuel the future purchases. If you want to go double fast, like we were talking with Albert on the last call, go out and get a 10 to 15K line of credit, have it just sitting there. Uh, and maybe do a bet on yourself and get something with a decent interest rate that you can go and um, do a lot. And you guys joining this program, you're betting on yourself too. You're throwing down the investment because you want to get the results. Um, it, it's amazing. I don't think you need a huge backing of money for a home service business, depending on the size of your goals. But I think for a single profitable location, you don't need a huge whack of money. And in fact, when you learn to value the value of a dollar, I think you're going to grow your business in a more um, prudent fashion as well. Can't wash houses till I have a proper soft wash set up. Uh, we did our first $250,000 literally just downstreaming with the next jet. We didn't get a soft wash till August 2019. So smash that out. Uh, I love this one. Coaching has to be one to one and not be group based. You guys are all in this group program. Seeing you guys at the summit, a lot of you are just raving about the community that's been built here is, is incredible. So, um, you know, that's been smashed. If I step away from my business, the business will fall apart. Um, you know, I take a lot of time off. I've talked about that as well. Uh, we'll just keep finishing this here. We'll finish strong, guys. 
if I don't go do the quote right away, the prospect will book with my competitor. A lot of you need to hear this. Start to block schedule your time. Those of you new in the program, you should be able to scale up your company doing in-person quotes on no more than two days per week. So if I get a call today and it's slow season, so we want the work, right? I get a call to soft wash someone's home. Chances are I'm not going to be jumping in my car and driving out to quote them today. Thank you, Mrs. Smith, for your call, et cetera, et cetera. See if we can quote virtually. If not, let's go in person. She prefers that. Awesome. Tracy, I can come out. I've got next Tuesday. Uh, I'm actually in your neighborhood in the morning about nine o'clock. Would that work okay? Ah, sorry, Jason. I'm taking the kids to school that time. No problem. I've also got Tuesday afternoon. Would that be better? You know what? I have this thing. Okay, no problem. I'm actually in your area next Thursday as well. That works a lot better. Let's boom this time. And you start building out your two days next week where you can have five quotes at a time. So that's how you build out your quoting schedule rather than Tracy calls today. I'll be there at, uh, what is it right now? 9.30, I'll be there at 10.15. Like throw off your whole day and just boom, go try book that. You don't get in a rhythm. And when I'm quoting, I wanna be doing at least three quotes being the salesperson for that like dedicated time. So that was a limiting belief I had. Tracy's going to go call Shackshine. She's not going to give Revive a chance unless I go zip out there right now. And the odd job will be time sensitive. You should jump on, but I would say nine out of 10 times they'll fit into like your block schedule. Um, and I've been doing this for years. So um, had to beat down on that one. Uh, don't be friendly with competitors or they'll take your secrets, okay? Um, talk to Chemo, talk to Jackson, talk to me. We've got, you know, of our handful of competitors, we grab coffee with them, uh, lunch with them, hang out. You don't need to go share your price book and your numbers dashboard with them. Uh, I'm definitely not doing that, but I'm certainly having them as friendly. Uh, if their sign is down, like I've put their sign up before and them to me as well. Like it, I'm actually pretty good buddies with our Shackshine guy here. Um, and so that's just my mindset is the pie is massive. There is so much work for everyone. I wouldn't be giving all my info to the competitors, but I would definitely be friendly and meeting up for, you know, a lunch two, three times a year kind of thing um, is, is just going to go a long way to meet your competition. And my goal locally is getting all of our competitors to actually charge more and know the cost of their business um, so that we can actually push out all these $99 guys and actually be that rising tide that's going to lift all the boats up. Um, so that's just kind of my personal um, view towards it. I can't train my team members too much or they'll go out and start their own business and undercut me. Uh, we talked about this at the summit, you know, putting Steve on the spot. Why aren't you leaving Revive? You could easily go do this on your own. You could overtake Dave, same with Katrina, um, but they're bought in. And like, if they chose to leave today, it would suck. It really would suck, but I would find a way to figure it out and move on. And running a business is extremely hard. Your team members need to know just how much of a grind it is. Um, and you almost want to show them that running a business is not um, all that glamorous. And so as you get more success, whole nother aside, I would just be cautious flexing like a flashy lifestyle because I have seen friends do that. And that does not create uh, buy-in with your guys, like showing up to the job site in a suit or with Gucci shoes, just like, no, it, it serves me that I'm naturally not a fancy person. So I think that kind of helps create goodwill with the team, but um, yeah, just keep that in check because that can go real quick where it goes to your head and then people don't want to be on your team. So just like, if you've got like a spouse, that's like, keeps you grounded, it'll be good. Like I got Alex, she's like, okay, your head's getting a little big. Like, let's just Bring her back down to earth. You guys that are married know what I mean. So, okay. Uh, if I invest in TV and radio ads, I'll get lots of work. My business will be successful. I've wasted thousands, thousands, thousands on radio. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm saying if your budget is less than tens of thousands of dollars, I actually don't think it will work. So you got to go repetitive. You got to do it a bunch and you got to have um, deeper pockets than I have for growing revive. So we pulled out of it. Same thing with TV. I bought a primetime spot, a uh, couple grand, got interviewed by this uh, TV show, and uh, I'm waiting, waiting for all the calls, and uh, we didn't get a single call. So 
It was totally an ego thing. Get on TV, whatever. Um, again, just didn't work for us. So that's uh, had to fight my belief the opposite way. I have to work 80 hours a week to be successful. You absolutely do not. Um, I would say growing Revive, I topped out around 60-ish hours a week. Beyond 60 for me ended up being a law of diminishing returns. I would usually work um, Monday to Friday would be like pretty strong 10, 11 hour days. And Saturdays, I would work Saturday morning till like noon. And for like four years, I took 1.5 days off uh, for a weekend and that worked fine for me. Um, so that's just been my experience. I don't think you need to do it. Again, successful is very relative. Um, you know, we all define it differently, but how I define it, uh, I believe in being wealthy with my time and my lifestyle and my freedom and also wealthy uh, with income. And I talked about this on my interview with Alex, uh, literally just saying, hey, if you paid me an extra 200 grand, but I had to work significant, like 20 hours more per week, I don't think I would do it because um, yeah, money's replaceable, but you only have one life with time. So um, that's why I set my business up for uh, my lifestyle and for my time. And then last not least, I have to work seven hours a week. Grind, 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 right? You guys know that. Some of you like running that, totally fine. For me, um, I need that Sunday off to just retreat, um, take a day off, throw my phone in a drawer. And I think I'm a sharper entrepreneur because of time off. Um, and I can kind of, you guys will notice when you start going down that road of burnout, I've never had a full-on like burnout crash. Like I've had buddies that have just, shut down their business or laid in bed for for multiple months and i i've not experienced that but for me i can notice i'll get more irritable uh, a little more snappy agitated little things will upset me um, i'll lose a bit of the passion for my business right toby kind of touched on that of like you know why am i doing this is this even worth it um and generally it's just a little warning sign in my brain of like dave honestly just like take a day off go for a drive, I've mentioned this, we have like a spa close where Matus lives. I'll go there for a day. Um, we're going away next week. I, I don't feel like super burned out right now, but it's just like, that's what we're doing. Um, and so just like listening to yourself and your body and your emotions and when you need time off, I think it's like pretty important um, as well. So we're all on different schedules, but definitely make sure you have time for yourself uh, as you build this business is, is really important. Okay, we'll hit this in just a sec. Uh, Jason met up with a competitor. That is awesome. And let's just check our time that we're doing. Awesome. Cool. Two more slides, guys. Uh, let's get into the how, okay? Hopefully you resonated with some of those. Uh, again, feel free to put in the chat uh, a limiting belief you want to fight. So how do you actually smash these out? Okay, number one, I'd go to the dollar store today. I would literally buy these cue cards if you haven't yet. Start writing them down. It's amazing. I kept them in my little filing cabinet here. You look back seven years and it puts a smile on your face. That's what I want you guys to see right now. So some of you are doing 100K this year. Write down, there is no way I can build a fill-in-the-blank business, million-dollar business, $2 million business, whatever. I can never make more than 200 grand take-home per year. I can never whatever. It has to be... You guys know those thoughts that you have right now. Um, we're going to work with you to smash them down. And as vulnerable as you want to be, I'd encourage you to share them with your coach or even share them in the community uh, or privately with me uh, as well. But you should write them down. So that's number one. Two, you want to question and challenge them, okay? What makes you believe this? Why do you believe this? Why is it important to you? And then you want to get around someone or people who've already conquered that limiting belief, okay? Literally just being in this program is, is going to do that. Turning up to your calls, seeing, wow, someone's in my market an hour away and they're already getting jobs. Well, now you've suddenly given yourself permission to be able to do that. We're all human and we're all weird and you think weird. And it's like, sometimes you just need to see someone in a neighboring market get after it. And that gives you a bit of permission to go out and get it. So, um, you know, th this is to prove that this is possible. You can beat it. And you want to change your self-talk too. I've talked deep with a number of you. What's the story you're telling yourself? What do you tell yourself in the morning? I posted on school 
like I think that's one of the best speeches I've heard honestly that 10 minute Denzel Washington clip how he is rejected from his initial acting career in the specific auditorium and 30 years later he's giving like the the he's filming that I think fences his movie uh he's filming it in that same place and it just gives you chills of what can happen over a few decades and it's like that type of stuff I think is really good to program into your head so have a couple of like motivation playlists have a couple people you can message right lean on Jackson lean on me uh lean on coach chemo like that's why you guys are in this community one I really do because um I tend to be a very analytical person and if this happens then this will happen and then it moves to this ask yourself and write it down what is the worst case scenario okay when COVID started here, like no one knew what it was, the whole country like locked down. And I was like, crap, are we going to lose like the whole company that I've worked for like five years to build? Uh, very stressful. I had to write down and I filled up like a, I'll find it somewhere for you guys. I filled up a journal like three years ago. What's going to happen if we lock down and I lose all my guys and all this and my clients. And it's like literally just writing it down in point form actually gave me a lot of belief because it's kind of like that problem that quote like if money can make your problem go away like you don't have a problem right and so there's few things in life I think you know health spouse loved ones that actually really matter right does it really matter in March if you do 30k or 50k grand scheme not really I definitely think you should run after your goals but I think keep perspective that this is business and like this is Toby's life over here. Yeah, there, there's a super highway between the two and they're integrated. But like your net worth and value of your business by no way equates like who you are as a person. And again, I talked about that in the interview. If you took all the business stuff away from me, real estate rentals, whatever, I still think I'm like the same person if I was working, you know, a, a normal corporate job or whatever the case may be. So just be cautious of like, viewing your business success and integrating that with like who you are. I still think being an entrepreneur is like a huge piece of who I am, but my life would still go on and be totally fine if it was like detached from it. Mind you, I think I would be like a pretty bad employee, but that's besides the point. Um, then recite guys, your new beliefs and affirmations. So, you know, writing down what you think is not possible and then using another flip card that could say speaking the language of the person you're becoming, right? Um, I, I use this painted picture, right? And I've literally wrote out in five years time um, what life will look like, right? And I was reading back on mine from years ago and it's crazy. So much so from like the car you drive to where you live to like, you can, I don't want to get like too woo woo, but I think whatever I've achieved in my life, I've generally like made a vision of it in my head or a vision board, and then I write it down um, and I've shared it with some of you guys, my five-year painted picture. And I would encourage you like write that out, what that looks like and start to like talk and act like that person. And it's kind of like that quote, you speak the language of the person that you want to become. So um, I think that's super important as well to kind of see yourself in a new light. All right, last slide, I promise. So discussion for yourself. Um, what's the number one belief holding you back? Okay, I want to talk about this for a few minutes. It could be employee related or building a team. There's no one good out there. The hiring market sucks. I don't have the work right now, so I'm scared to hire. Whatever it is, it could be an income ceiling. Whatever you pulled out of your business last year, let's say 70 grand. If I told you to double it this year and you say it's not possible, that's a limiting belief as well. I can't pull 140 grand. There's no way. You can pull it work it backwards what revenue is that who's on your team how much are you pulling out whole bunch of mindset around the recession too right guys people hold their dollars tighter there's going to be no work out there i started my painting business in a recession with door knocking you add on a recession with uh also no jobs no client reviews never hired someone i'm 19 student painting who's going to trust this kid you have to figure it out so like there's no perfect time to get going and trust me, if you started your business in COVID, it was really tough hiring people, easy to get work. We're kind of running like a totally different game now uh, where it's kind of reversing. It's interesting. 
Um, scarcity mindset around your prices, right? Maybe traditionally your charge rates never cleared $100 an hour. We need to look at that. We need to deep dive and be a premium price provider in your market. Uh, could be around like Superman syndrome. Some of you carry this. Some of you are very strong, like operationally, and you'll like bulldoze your technicians to go get a job done because you are the guy that like does the thing. Um, be cautious of that. So I think like you being the key person in one department of your business, that can hold you back as well. Uh, Close-minded mindset. We had a tech yesterday on his one-to-one. -one. He's like, before I, let, before I leave, I want to make a presentation of a new service we should do with Revive. I said, oh boy. So he goes through it and he says, I want to... I want to see this company move into high rise, like window cleaning. And I was like fighting it in my head with everything of like, this is not going to happen. This is a dumb idea, et cetera. I said, honestly, man, you have the floor. Like this is your hour, take it away. And Steve and I took a bunch of notes and we're, we're kind of half interested in it. I don't, not for this year, but we're talking about it. So I had to check myself that it has to be this way let's remain open-minded. Let's see what this tech has to say. Let's show them the respect of an open room. You don't need to implement all the ideas your team members give you, but I do think you need to have two ears and one mouth and actually listen. Like, I think the best leaders are the best listeners. So you should be hearing their, their take, but it doesn't mean you need to implement it. It, it still is your business. And lastly, is a skill gap, okay? I could never book a $10,000 job. I could never door knock because it's scary. I could never, whatever, hire someone who wants $60,000 a year. Guys, I'll tell you, half my hires I've made have asked for more money initially than I started them at. I remember when Lannon came in, I didn't know him super good. And um, he, he was interested in the sales position. I shot him over the application form and I, I'll find it somewhere, but he put on like hourly wage. Like it was like 35 or $40 an hour. And I was just like, definitely can't do that. And started him, I think at like 19 plus some commission. And he literally said in the interview, well, if you, if I don't ask, the answer will always be no. And I thought, man, this guy has a lot of confidence and got him on, sold a ton of work and still working with him today, uh, albeit in a different company. So kind of cool, like challenging that of like, don't be scared. We have applications right now. People are asking for 35 an hour. It's scary. Hey, we're going to start you at 22, but we have three bonus tiers we could pay you and maybe get you up there. It, you know, the right people aren't going to say no um, for the pay initially. It needs to be in line. It needs to be fair, but you don't always 